Hello everyone! Welcome to your spooky Sunday story here at Seaside Shadows. My name is Laura and I'm one of the ghost hostesses at Seaside Shadows. And I'm going to be telling you a very mysterious story tonight. Now this story comes from Canton. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may have even grown up there. Now in Canton, there is a very mysterious figure that is seen on Route 44. This figure seems normal. You know, lots of people ride their horses around that area. Some people might decide to wear cloaks in that area while riding their horse. But I don't think there are many residents, at least on this earthly plane, that do not have a head. Now I'm going to tell you the famous story of the Headless Horseman of Canton. Now this story is not something that we have just simply made up. This has been told to us many times by the residents, and it was also in a story, and of course everyone's favorite magazine of the day, the Connecticut Quarterly. Some of you may remember my last story came from the Connecticut Quarterly about the black dog of the Hanging Hills. Well, here comes another story from another resident historian of the day. Let me read you a bit of background about this. This is from the Connecticut Quarterly of July, August, September in 1895. It was written by the Honorable William Edgar Simmons, so you know he is at least somewhat trustworthy. Now, Mr. Simmons was a historian at that time, and this is what he managed to collect from various residents and old timers around the town, as well as different documentation. He says, in the early days, the largest number of houses was near the center of the town and came to be called Canton Center. But the most important highway in the old town of Simsbury, sometime the Albany Turnpike, with the Litchfield Turnpike branching off at Suffrage, ran from east to west across the southern part of the present town of Canton. On it, at Suffrage, now Canton Village, was established in 1798 the first post office in the town of Simsbury, and, as a part of the Litchfield Turnpike, there was built across the Tunxis, now Farmington River, the first town bridge in Simsbury, a mile north of the present Collinsville. This was a famous old highway, enlivened by many a stagecoach drawn by four or six horses, and made musical by the merry winding of the driver's horns. At Suffrage, at the forking of the two turnpikes, there stood for more than a century the famous Hosford Tavern, around which hangs a gruesome story. Now at this point, it sounds just like talking about location, talking about the town, everything seems fairly normal, but we do have this tavern. Now he is correct in saying this tavern was around for more than a century. Now it was around even longer than that under a different name. Now our story begins as his does with a time period, and that is 1777. This was in the early stages of the revolution, and this is when the French were just starting to get involved. In 1776, Benjamin Franklin had traveled all the way to France to convince the king to help the U.S. cause. Now, of course, the French would do anything just to piss off the English, of course. So they agreed, and they began to send money and arms and men until finally, at this point in our story, in 1777, the Saratoga Campaign was right on track. From June to October of that year, they were battling in Saratoga, New York, attempting to take it back from the British. Now, there were a great deal of French units that were at this place. Many of these French soldiers were fighting along with the arms that were provided by the king. In fact, it is said that the king of France had provided over 90% of the arms during the Saratoga campaign. It cannot be stressed enough how important these French were. And of course our story does revolve around a certain Frenchman. It is here where Simmons continues and says, during the revolution, a French paymaster left Hartford to Saratoga with his stout saddlebags filled with gold for the payment of the French officers in the American army. Now, other interesting facts about this. Who was leading the Saratoga campaign? Connecticut's very own Benedict Arnold. 
Although at this point in 1777, he was not a traitor. In fact, he was seen as an American hero. He was leading the charge to take back Saratoga from the British. Now as we continue on, we begin to delve into this mysterious Frenchman who is making his way to this infamous Saratoga campaign. Mr. Simmons says that this man was traced to this tavern, Hosford Tavern in Canton, for a night's rest and no further. This man came to the tavern at night and come the morning, he never departed. Now the innkeeper always avowed that Lai departed safe and sound, but was probably heavenward, for no evidence of lateral travel was ever found, and a discovery made after the tavern burned down a few years ago, bear in mind the story was written in the late 1800s, tends towards a belief of his murder. Now this man did disappear. A message from Courtney. <laughs> This man did disappear, but the Saratoga campaign was successful and continued on, and no one really gave a second thought to that Frenchman, just thinking perhaps robbers had gotten him on the road. But I did, just a few hours ago, find a contemporary report from the 19th century, when the tavern was still established, saying that it was known as a place of ill repute, and that there were some unscrupulous characters that were involved in this tavern. And knowing that this tavern was still in the same family hands that it was during this account as it was when this Frenchman disappeared, it makes one wonder. I did hear that the innkeeper was known to be one of these unscrupulous characters. Is it possible that this Frenchman stayed overnight in this inn and the innkeeper saw an opportunity with his saddlebags laden with gold for these French troops? Did he? perhaps kill this Frenchman and take his gold. But where would this Frenchman be? That is the gruesome discovery. Now Mr. Simmons does continue on without naming the aforementioned discovery, saying, this incident endowed the highway with the legend of a ghastly phantom, a headless horseman to be met at night in a neighboring pass where the trees shadow the road so completely that no sunlight penetrates even midday. So we have a mysterious discovery in the tavern, and all of a sudden we have a mysterious phantom. Well, that discovery was made in November 1874, when the Hosford Tavern burned down. For in the rubble of that building, deep down in the basement, they discovered a human skeleton with no head. There was no explanation for this, none was ever given, and he was buried in an unmarked grave. Now, could it be that this was simply someone that had an accident at the tavern? Or could it be that this was our Frenchman? Could it be that the innkeeper had cut off his head and taken his gold, and thus the Frenchman wanders Canton ever since, still trying to make his way to Saratoga on his most desperate mission? Now the phantom does seem to appear to all who visit this place. He is seen riding his horse. Sometimes his cape is seen whipping through the trees. He is seen galloping furiously. And they said sometimes the horse's eyes seem to glow as he is making his way towards Saratoga. Now some also say that you can hear the phantom hooves of a horse on the road. Sometimes he is even seen as a full apparition, as was a case in the 19th century during the Civil War. We have an account from a Canton historian, Dr. Lawrence Carleton, and he states that during the Civil War, a weary traveler was wandering the road. He was looking to get to the Hosford Tavern. So he asked someone, hidden in the trees by shadows, where he might find this tavern. Nothing was strange about this figure to him. It was a man standing next to a horse in the shadows. He said, good sir, I am looking for the Hosford Tavern. Do you know where I might find it? The man did not reply. He only pointed towards the direction of the tavern. The man thanked him and went on his way. 
And as he turned, it was only then he realized that the man to whom he was speaking had no head. Others have reported that they have almost hit him with their car as he is galloping down this road. Some people have claimed to have seen him near the site of the tavern. Though the consistent being that he is always headless, and also that he is always galloping west towards the direction of Saratoga in his great unrest to continue his mission. Now is it because he was never recognized that he is still haunting this road? Is it because he never reached Saratoga and he is forever haunted by the fact that he let down his own men? For this we will never know. What is known is that you can still go looking for this headless horseman in Canton. If you go looking for him, he may be on Route 44 between Canton and Farmington Valley. You may hear those phantom hooves. You may see the flickering of the cape in the woods. Perhaps you may even see the Headless Horseman himself. If you do, perhaps you should ask him where the Hosford Tavern is. Thank you so much for joining me on this spooky story tonight. I hope you enjoyed it, and tune in every Sunday for our spooky stories at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow I will be on with Courtney and Andrew. We will be doing our Mystical Mondays, and you can join us then, where you can answer questions, or you can just listen to us have a little chat have a little relaxation away from the madness of today. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.